Hey everybody, Jay Barino here. Welcome back. Continuing StarCraft II, a war story created by DudeKey. I have plans to approach this series a little differently because there is a cool amount of replayability and there is a meta level of currency on the strategy layer. So as we look at the achievements, for example, we got these locked achievements. So these don't actually provide anything besides, you know, satisfaction to complete. So what I'm actually going to do is, last week you saw me play this mission, tons and tons of dialogue, very long video. Now, I'm going to come back the following week, which for you is right now, and I'm going to get the veteran level achievements and all of the available points. So that way we can go into the next mission with all possible points, and you can see, you know, where the secret is and how to complete the optional objectives. So again, there's going to be like blind playthrough, and if you want to get really immersed in the story and the characters, you can. And then there's going to be a follow-up where we can focus on gameplay. Now, I'm not going to do the, the nightmare achievements. I think I'll just avoid those. Um... But, uh, the reason that I'm doing this is I don't think that I would afford most projects the privilege of playing through missions twice, but because I want to get the points so that I can see all the interesting gameplay-related unlockables, I think it's important that I do play through twice, because some of these optional objectives require a second playthrough. Uh, I'm making this decision after finishing mission two, uh, by the way, so you're going to see these videos slightly out of order. But the point is, uh, I want to showcase everything that this campaign has to offer, which is a ton of story-related stuff. Uh, which It's like 75% cinematics. And because of that, I have a personal preference where I feel like this campaign leans too heavily into that. I can talk more about this at, at future times. So basically, it's so dense that by the time the mission ends or by the time I'm through a really long cutscene, I'm just ready for it to be over. And it really skews my mood towards the rest of the map. But on the other hand, these missions have so much that check off the boxes of things that I do really like. Um, explicitly, the uh, bank, the usage of bank data and how it ties into rewarding the player for having to explore and not being given obvious hints on how to complete the bonus objectives. I really appreciate that, and I really, really enjoy it. Again, just like very cool rewards for actually uh, exploring and tying that into bank data and having this meta-level currency. I really, really like that, but again, I think... My personal preference with the the way that the story is presented, it sort of takes me out of that and shifts my mood, which is why I want to do a separate piece to this series, which is like the completionism part of it. So with that in mind, uh, we're going to get into this and we're just going to skip all the cutscenes and we're going to play on Veteran. And again, the Nightmare Achievements are something different. Maybe when all is said and done, we'll go back and check out the Nightmare difficulty, but I just don't think that that's for me. I just don't think that's that that's for me. So as soon as the actual cinematic starts, we can skip it. And let's also check the achievements. The other thing we can do is uh, we want to see a nice clean score screen at the end so we can blast through the, uh, the codex as well. We're not going to watch them. We're just going to trigger them and then skip them so that they're, they're marked as watched again on the score screen. So we skip all of this. And let's see what our actual achievements are before we get started here. So we hotkey. Good stuff. Are you ready? We can skip these. We check the codec. Contacts. Boom, skip. Boom, skip. Boom, you're not there anymore. Goodbye. And let's look at the achievements. So get all available points. We have to complete the optional objective and find the secret. The secret is on the very last section of the map. And then do not let a hero drop below 50% health in the Taurus missions and veteran. So that's where we're currently at. We want to make sure we get through this without letting our heroes drop too far. And then these next two are for the last section so we can review those later. And then this is the nightmare one, which is to kill that Ultralisk in a short period of time. Again, not going to worry about that. So let's go. It is an honor. Because that, that would require even another playthrough of these sections. Interesting. Um, I want this I want this part of the the playthrough to focus here. more on uh, maybe some of the details we that I missed well together, again because again I was so kind of out of it I'm after sitting through a lot of the text and the dialogue the so we don't want those heroes to well drop below a certain HP you had best be prepared you gonna give me greetings. And so anyway, I hope this series has a little something to offer for everyone with that in mind, right? If you don't want to have to skim through the really, really long videos um, with all the dialogue, then you don't have to, right? It's up to you. Uh, you know, you could check this out to see. So, like, one thing, like, this canyon, for, this canyon section, for example, has really cleverly hidden optional objectives. 
And uh, it looks really, really nice. But I, I also want to address the issue that I have with the, the rock bridges and kind of talk about why I struggled to see those in the first place. Um, but there's there's a lot of little details here. Like, specifically, I really like how the, the Brother of Taurus, for example, their decal, you can't really see it here. You'll see it on the buildings later, is uh, is a bull, right? Because the, the Taurus... The Taurus sign. I think that's cool. Uh, and that's just, like, what I'd consider a fairly minimal uh, detail. But it's nice to see. And anyway, we're going to quick save a lot. Okay, go ahead and heal here. And then when this is done, we can hit that codex, because the codex transmission. Again, to knock it out. Ba-boom, skip, boom, skip, boom, skip. Done. Okay. Continue quick saving. So be it. A clever move. And I remember this was coming. We lost a marine. Honestly, let me tell you, don't care. As long as uh, my heroes are above that 50%. It's funny because I'm pretty sure I lost a marine in that exact same section. I don't think that's going to stop us from being able to stop our heroes. For, that's going to stop us from achieving the the final achievement of uh, the 50% health thing, but we'll see. Okay, back across the bridge. Okay, so as they path... So this is a bridge, right? But the reason that... I, it's because it, the color is slightly different, and while I realize it is a bridge, from this angle, and this might seem crazy to you, because to you, you're like, how could you possibly see that as anything but a bridge? Um, to me, it looks like it's a rock outcropping. Like, this is... It's like a mountain doodad, and that's the peak. That's how I saw it. Um, so I didn't think it was traversable initially. So I do think it's a little visually odd. But I guess that's the kind of stuff where... You know, on one hand, it's like, okay, the player's expected to be observant. But on the other hand, um, some of this stuff might just be difficult to see, you know? And that's just the way it goes. So, in general, I guess that's what testers are for, is to kind of help discern what is, like, a legitimate visual issue and what is, uh... So be it. Clever. And what is just, you know, the player not being observant enough. Okay, gotta, I guess, wait for this, please. Go for it. We'll stim ya. We'll stim ya. We'll hit stop occasionally to kill these things that are coming out. We're just letting Rourke take the heat from these spawned units. All right. But in general, like, I like this section. It's, again, it's interesting because it feels very linear, but then there are these, like, particularly well-hidden spots with the bonuses. So, like, you'll get to the end and be like, how the heck could I have missed anything? It's just a canyon. And yet... On the fight ahead. Okay, uh, well, we don't want we don't want the Marines in the front, and then let's make sure that Be we hit careful. the bonus, which I think is there. Remember, it was near the bottom of the map. Of course. Let us focus okay, let's try to shift ahead. these frenzied Hydras and who they're attacking. I well, the other thing I want to uh, touch on is how if you remember if there was a Maparino entry called AWS Faction Wars, which is all these different factions that are set up for this campaign. So again, the foundation is there. For incorporating all this, which I think is really cool. Oh, look at these jerks coming in from behind. No, no. <laughs> um, so the way I interpret Taurus, based on this map, and then you'll see in the next mission, there's a very slight change to the te or a, a, an expansion to the tech tree, where it's very clear that it seems to me like the Taurus. Brotherhood of Taurus is, is way more about damage output. Now, I don't think that necessarily means that you have to play them super aggressively. You can play defensively. It's more just that, you know, no matter whether you're on the offense or defense, your damage output has a much higher potential than, like, the red guys, for example. The, why do I keep forgetting their name? The Forged Hand, for example. Uh, which, again, you'll see an example of in the next mission.
Not much time left for preparation. I am, I am with you until... Uh, and then, it's kind of the same with these, this Ravager faction. Like, the fact that they get Hydra Frenzy. Like, you don't just casually give the AI Hydra Frenzy. <laughs> We've been walking for a while, etc., etc. I'm not worried about the dialogue here. We don't have any outstanding codex, do we? I guess we'll check in a moment here. on the fight ahead. Agreed. I don't. Okay, and again, we're just trying to get through this with the, the achievement in mind. Um, the Ultralisk is up in this direction. I guess if we were playing on Nightmare, um, the thought of even getting through here with this many Marines alive. I'm assuming you'd need all the Marines alive to, to deal enough damage to the Ultralisk to kill it within that 14 seconds from when you spawn it. But again, we're just not gonna, we're not gonna worry about that. I'm not concerned about it. Maybe we'll revisit this all further in the future for Nightmare stuff, but I generally, as a general rule, just don't trust the highest level of difficulty as created by Mapmakers. Like, if there's just, like, normal and hard, yeah, I'd consider I'd, I'd consider playing on hard. But if there's if there's like normal, medium, hard, I don't trust that hard. Nuh uh You had best be prepared. But it's nice when it's you know the difficulties aren't labeled easy, medium, hard. Like in this case where it's uh, adventurer, veteran. Uh, it's adventure, veteran, and then nightmare. Okay, you're fine. You haven't dropped below that. I'm ready to move. That 40%. You're good. You're good. Yes, and we did get all the bonuses, so we're good to proceed. And let's see if we got it. Actually, there's another walking section, if I remember correctly. There is another walking section. Okay, well, we got to get through this part without dropping below the 50%. And if we can do that... Then we're in good shape. One new codec conversation. Knock it out. Ba-boom. Mr. Crowder, goodbye. I've hu I, ha I hung up on him. You see, I'd be upset if I were him. I like this little mini heal on him. And even the even the hero abilities sort of reflect my interpretation of how um, Brotherhood is played. Which, again, is very aggressive. A lot of it is attack speed related. Ooh, 100! What's the actual achievement? Drop below 50%. Below 50%. So is it a is it a less than or equal to, or just a less than? It better be just a less than. Let me tell you, dude, Key. I'm going to be upset. Because I don't think I quick saved at the beginning of this section. I also think I made the same mistake when I played this originally, which was to come up and around this area when there's nothing up here. Hydra's attacking Rourke. That's good. Never mind. It's attacking... Sigs? Sigs does get the bonus from the extra marines. Uh, I think he attacks faster and he takes less damage, something like that. Uh, okay, we got it. Perfect. Great, great, great. So let's start the next section. Knock out the codex, look at the achievements, and then make a solid game save. So that we can see what we're trying to accomplish here, and if we can do them both at the same time. So, boom, skip, boom, skip, get hung up on sun. All right, so I think we've knocked out all the codex. I don't think it matters that you actually get those marked off on the score screen, but we can do it anyway, because it's gonna it rings at us. Okay, so we got tough leadership. Now we have to clear out all the Ravagers in less than 15 minutes, and don't lose any of the mine housings. That's difficult to do both of these at the same time. I suppose I'll try. I'm going to focus on doing the 15 minutes. And if we if we happen to be doing well with the mine housing, I can just utilize quick saves to make it work. Because I don't know if they spawn at random out of the caves and attack certain directions or not. But I think we can absolutely do both of these at the same time. And then obtain all available points. So we got the, the bonus objective. So now what we really need to do is find the secret. I know where it is. It's very obscure. Um... Perhaps too obscure? Okay, pick all these up. And then you here and here, and I guess kind of stand up there. And then pick that up. And with that money that we're getting, I am just going to go ahead and grab uh, second barracks, more SCVs, more Marines. Um, we can get this combat drugs upgrade as soon as possible. And we're going to be rallying over in this direction. 
So the hovels that I'm most concerned about are these, this one, and this one right there is going to be difficult because it's outside the fence. And if my ally walks out there and draws enemies to him, then that's a problem. Our allies are being attacked. Okay, and I'm just going to keep Marines queued up. Let's go ahead and get a second, or a third barracks, rather. We'll get reactors on these eventually. And as long as they're not attacking that hovel. And let's just go ahead and quick save a bunch as we make our way through this. Again, it's going to be close if I'm able to do all these at once or not. I, I really am, I'm sort of skeptical. And it really just depends on the direction that they attack us from. I think a big key here for the timing is ensuring that we don't have, uh, we don't spend money on bunkers. Right, because the more money we spend on bunkers... Uh, the less that we can get on just more combat units. And, like, we're getting, we're going to get that super stim here pretty soon, so we should be able to move quickly around these areas, and as long as we have a unit there to distract them and kind of kite them away from the mine houses, I think we'll be okay. Okay. Keep it up. Okay, that was our first attack. Uh, so quick save, because I don't know where they come from next. We're going to have to start splitting these units up making sure that we have enough up here to protect from any potential attacks let's go ahead and fill up this bunker and then we want to start combat drugs because the big key with combat drugs is it does heal your marines which is cool but I think the bigger key is that it uh, it increases the movement speed which I think is pretty huge so we're just going to get groups of marines to sit here rather than bunkers, and we're going to need some up here too. And then eventually we can kind of clump them together and go and attack at the same time. Which is my plan. I will pull one SCV off here. Well, that was bound to happen eventually, right? Right there. And ultimately, I think this is going to be much, much shorter than the first video, as you can imagine, because there's no there's no dialogue waiting. Let's go ahead and start a reactor. I think we need more Marines up there. Squads moving out against the Ravagers. A lot of this, too, is dependent on how, how successful can our ally be. Because if our ally kind of sucks and hoses it up, then, uh, you know, we're in trouble. We don't need any more gas. Just don't need any of it. Stop SCVs. We're good. We got the combat medicine, and then I think it's just combat drugs, not not medicine. But the Ravagers are pushing through one of the outposts. You got us. Oh, see, that's what I mean. They got that one right there. So we have to be prepared to protect some of these outlying areas because our our ally. In our first playthrough, for example, our ally was capable of pushing through that first hatchery, which I think helps. But if they fail, it draws some of the pre-placer again to attack that one hovel. So that's the one that I'm going to be most cognizant of. I think by spreading our other marines out is is fine. But again, this is a this is a I don't want to say a major issue, but like it's a it's a it's for the achievement, it's going to be a problem. But again, let's see if we can knock this out. Let's see if we can knock these these out at the same time. Again, we don't need... We need 200 gas, ultimately, to get combat drugs and everything else. What I can do is send him a couple marines, um, but I think it's more important that we keep these areas defended first and foremost. So we know they attack here next. Uh, part of it, too, is just memorizing the order of the attacks. I thought it was random, but it's clear that it's not. So let's get a... F we don't need a lot. We just need enough Marines to kite units into his bunker when the time is right. And, we'll, and it'll be fine. Alright, so let's take this group and get them up here. Upgrade complete. The squad's prepping to do a thing. I think we realistically only need one SCV here. Then back over here. Additional supply required. Yeah, so I think this is this is how it happened last time. Yep, so see. Additional supply required. 
Good. Now we can take these Marines and run them back down here. Let's get double supply depots and then get a reactor. And then get these guys into position, because if I recall, there was a very large attack that hits here that I was not ready for originally. We can also just make sure that we have some SCVs to repair the hovels themselves. Okay, looking good. We don't need any gas anymore. And this one's just about done. Because we're, we're pretty constrained on space, so I think it's important that reactors are pretty, pretty helpful here. And hopefully when he moves out next time, he won't draw any more pre-placed junk into us. And when we're ready to move out, we can kind of clump our units up and go to the upper left. One thing I'm not sure about, I haven't noticed yet, one thing I'll keep an eye out on is if my units do attack, or, or rather automatically use stim from inside the bunkers. Another problem is I did not really keep track of what time, what the timer was at when I loaded here. I will quick save though. Not enough minerals. Getting through the first section, if you're not doing any of the dialogue and stuff, is very fast. So that's, you know, if I have to replay it, I will, but I wouldn't be happy about it if that, if that makes sense. I'm going to wait for the next set of attacks, and then we're going to go and start at the upper left. As long as we're attacking the upper left, we know they won't attack us. And then all new Marines I can, I can um, put here to ensure that nothing gets killed there. I think they're going to get through this no problem. Or not, this guy's going to, I think, draw them into the hovel. We'll see. I think they actually will be able to kill these things. As long as they can kill this one Hydra. Come on, buddy. Good work. You know what? You're fine. Okay, so they attacked up there. So we're going to take these Marines, head up here, and start attacking across the upper right. And we're going to rally new Marines over here to ensure that this doesn't get picked. Right, so this is my attacking force, and they just attacked us. So I, I feel relatively safe. Okay. And then they spawn out of these caves, so if we can uh, just sit here and basically spawn camp them, they won't be able to get to the hovels. Obviously something quite important as well. Let's just get another SCV here. And then the larvae do count, but I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable leaving the larvae. Ah, uh, because we want to make sure we get the secret. By the numbers. Okay, looking good. Actually, I I'm cool killing these. This is fine. And then we're here to stop any potential spawns. Just keep making those marines, and we need more... Supply depots. By the way, the other thing I wanted to point out is I like the use of custom music. Uh, the score screen music is from Resident Evil 4, I believe. Not enough minerals. One thing I, I just completely forgot to, to, to bring up. I'm probably good to start attacking here, so this is what I mean. They spawn from these caves to attack the hovels, and we kind of spawn camp them, if that makes sense. That's Our dude is moving out, so I'm going to go ahead and attack up here with this group now. I think my plan is working out quite well. So let's grab the secret before I forget. It's this. It's this stupid crate. There's other crates around it. That's, so, in my humble opinion, that is way too vague. Especially considering that's like, what is that, 30% of all available points? That's a lot. Right, it's three out of nine, I think, available points. This It's, it's quite a bit. So let's quick save, because we're doing great. Uh, we just need to actually finish this up. Unfortunately, oh no, Crowley's still alive. He's got a few guys still alive. So let's sort of converge here and finish this up before any more Zerg spawn from the caves to potentially attack the hovels. And I think we absolutely annihilated this. This is the power of map knowledge. And this is where, like, I'm a big fan of being rewarded for, you know, mastering a map. But at the same time, when a map is like an hour and a half long, I feel way less incentivized to play it uh, more than once. 
But when you do it without the dialogue, then yeah, it's uh, yes, there we go. We got the less than 15 minutes. When you do it without the dialogue, it's a lot more satisfying, I think. Um, but the first time with the blind playthrough, then yeah, we'll we'll listen to all the transmissions and stuff. Let me see that hot score screen. I expect every point. That's what you love to see. Mine house is destroyed one! What are you talking about, game? Oh, I'm not happy about that. Did they get that outlying one? They must have gotten it. When did I quick save last? I am... I am displeased. Well, that's one achievement we gotta clean up. This one's still here. Oh, the one in front of our own base got hit. Oh. Okay. I think I got it this time. Let's kill this. Take this out. So these hovels are safe. This one's safe. This one's safe. This one's safe. The ones near this entrance are safe. We got the less than 15 minutes again pop up, even though I already technically earned that, but it must not register until you actually finish the mission. I thought that was only for points, not achievements that popped up, but I'm not sure. Might not be consistent there. So let's see the score screen. Okay, all points, all codex. We did find the secret. There's all available points on the Taurus mission. Colonial outpost cleared three of three. Looks good. And didn't lose a single mine house. Lowest health on Rourke didn't go below 120, and lowest on Six didn't go below 100. So let's go back to the launcher, and we can check our nice updated codex that should have our achievements. Again, we didn't get the nightmare one, but I think again, I'm not a crazy person. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go for those. So I hope my explanation of why I'm doing this series the way that I'm doing it makes some sense. Again, I feel like one aspect, one huge aspect of this campaign, um, again, which does end up being very subjective with how you view it uh, really detracts from my personal perspective. So therefore, I think it's important that maybe we revisit it to check out the things uh, that we do really like uh, without that without that specific thing. Because keep in mind, the, uh, the cutscenes are all skippable. And I think if I was playing this and not recording it, I probably would just skip the, the codex. I'd probably just skip them. All right, cool. So we got all those again. Maybe one day in the future we'll come back and we'll get the we'll get the nightmare ones. But I'm not too concerned about that. We'll check out mission twos uh, next time. So I've actually already recorded mission two, and it wasn't until after I finished it that I decided I'd come back and do this kind of weird completionist route as well. So uh, mission two, uh, we'll probably have a, a weird spliced in intro and outro uh, to acknowledge that I have since recorded a different video, which is this one. Anyway. That's neither here nor there. You don't care about that. I hope you enjoy this again. I hope there's a little something for everyone in this series. If you're really into the story, the the normal videos are for you. And then uh, hopefully you'll also enjoy the follow-up here where we're focusing mostly on the gameplay, giving feedback mostly on the gameplay, and trying to get those achievements. All right, thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.